Many of you have heard the channel explain the ideas that the uh, first virtual reality game known as the Old Testament is the Adam and Eve game. Now, you do not need to read this story or even go into religion to understand the concept. The concept is that there was an Adam and an Eve, and they were living in complete peace. They were living in prosperity, a land called Eden, where all of their needs were met, and all their job was to do was express and be the example of God in human form, to be able to live and thrive in the state of being all that is in union together. And in this idea, this, this way of the story unfolding, uh, whether it was Adam or Eve, it doesn't even matter, but there was an introduction of a separation element that said, look over here, you can choose. Do you want to have to be stuck here living in this beautiful place? Or do you want to see what this whole vast world has to offer? Do you want to learn about things? Do you want to know about things? Well, then eat this apple. And if you eat this apple from the tree of knowledge, well, then you and decide whether or not you want to be God. You can be your own God. You can be a different form of that. And whether it was Adam or Eve, it does not matter because this is a metaphor for you understanding your particular story. So let us say just for uh, the common thread of what most of you have read is that re the rebellion started through Eve being um, inspired to know more, to rebel against the laws or the rules that God himself put into place to keep them safe and secure so they could have this physical expression as gods. And let us say that as Adam, uh, as Eve ate from the apple, then she was now not allowed to live in the same state. This was considered a sin, which your definition in Greek is to miss the mark, but our definition is to separate from your nature. So once she separated from her nature, she no longer had the union of the, of the daughter of God, of the child of God. She was forgetting she who she was, and therefore, because she didn't have that remembrance and that connection, she felt all alone, and she felt that it was Adam that did not protect her, and then Adam was banished because of the break in the law, and this is the first simulation. The first simulation is that the masculine feels unworthy, and the feminine feels rebellious, or or has a, a resentment against uh, the unworthiness within her, her own self, or within her masculine concept. But what we want you to understand here is that you could say, oh, well, I am playing the Eve role and and so and so he's playing the Adam role. But this is actually not true either. I want to show you how precise this game is. Your left hemisphere is Eve, known as your genetics. Your right hemisphere is known as Adam or your atomic structure. The parts of you that are built, the building blocks of who you are, the atoms that make up you are your right brain. You are the right hand of God. You are the right side of God. And the left is the feeling space, the genetic story, the script, uh, the evolution of your path here. And combined in your one body, in the one house, in the the one vessel that you have to create all of reality in, you have this story playing out in your hemispheres. You have the story of Adam and Eve in your right and left brain. And this brain is going to think thoughts based on its original story, origin story, known as the Old Testament. And you can see if you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, it feels like we have two different gods, but we do not. Because it's a simulation. And you would say, why would God create such a game? And we would say, well, God separated himself so he could have something to love. Could you imagine being love here and having no thing to love? No place to put your love? Nowhere to receive love? And so this was the idea. And so in the idea of love having something to love, well, then we also want to have the game of moving towards love from a place of belief to absence of love. And this is where the third dimensional storyline has come in in creation. You can learn 
learn more about the, your own spirit and soul in separation than you will ever learn from living in the heavens. You will learn more from your struggles than you ever have learned through your feathered nests. And so many of you have chosen to come into third dimension to have this story, this origin story that is only a story. This is not you. This is not real. And when you close your eyes for the last time and you awaken in another dimension, you will say, wow, that was very realistic. That feels very real. And you will retain all of the memories and sensations and experiences that went into each and every life you've lived. And you will say, I want to do it again. And this time I want to remember. I want my Adam and Eve to fall madly in love with each other and create a child. And I want this child to be the Christ. And so if you think about the work of Neville Goddard, Neville Goddard goes into deep explanation about once you remember who you are, you will birth Christ within you, and then you will know that you are the father. You are the father? How could you be the father? How could you be? Well, if you think about it, you all have the Adam and Eve brain that move into alignment, and when it moves into alignment, you will produce a child called Christ. So basically, this entire story in a nutshell is the union, the marriage between your left and right hemispheres working together to create a happy, loving marriage that will generate on impact your own Christ the child that will be birthed through you. This is your fifth dimensional self. This is your purest form. This is your higher self embodied. And your higher self waits in the ethers for this birth. It waits in the higher planes for this remembrance. But instead, most of you are at all odds with yourselves and you're at odds with your own brain and then when you are at odds with your own brain well then you generate more atoms outside of you you generate more eaves look at every masculine relationship in your reality and that is your right hemisphere vibration look at every feminine relationship you have in your life right now that is your eve vibration you say well i don't get along with women well, you don't get along with yourself. All men are cowards. Well, your masculine energy is a coward. And so you are projecting this out because you cannot see inside of you. You need a mirror. Just like when you're driving, you need to look over your shoulder to see if it is safe for you to change lanes. And so in this particular incarnation, you generate people, places, and things to act as your blind spot mirror. But every single thing is you. So whatever conflict you have in your reality is letting you know from a place of absolutely no judgment in total neutrality this is what is vibrating. This is what I have generated from the beliefs that I have. Now, this game gets very solidified by the age of seven, because by the time you are seven years old, most of the feminine energy has gone into rebellion because she does not feel safe or provided for the way she wants to be. And most of the masculine energy moves into a state of unworthiness and undeserving in the idea of I cannot uh, prove to my father that I am worthy or that I am good enough and so the little girl loses her daddy figure and the, and the, the, the little boy loses the proudness of his father and the game begins the mothers are usually rebellious or in some sort of conflict and so here is your origin story notice how every single one of you have a different tale and yet this is your origin story and any of you that are still struggling to be the masculine in your reality well this is your story and any of the feminine energy that is having a struggle with their visionary or their imagination or their idea of moving into expansion through abundance and prosperity through receiving. Well, this is your story still. So it does not matter how much metaphysics you study. A matter of fact, the more you study without embodiment, you are just training your ego to speak the language of God. You are giving your ego power to speak in the voice of God when you study without embodiment. Embodiment is where you teach your body to be in love with itself, to teach your body to be in union with your dreams, to teach your body how to move the way your heart moves, not the way that fear moves. When you move the way fear moves, you build reality out of fear. When you move the way your heart moves, you build a life of love. When you get your Adam right, every masculine relationship 
will correct itself. When you get your Eve right, every feminine relationship will harmonize, which means sisters will have sisters and brothers will have brothers and fathers will be proud and mothers will be nurturing. And this is what we all want because every single motivational factor of your existence is either protecting you from abandonment or rejection. Action of imagination is the state of being. Your behavior is your atom. Your behavior is your atom. Your desires, your wishes, your thoughts, your feelings are your Eve. Do they match? Do they match? Can you be Eve around your spouse? Can you say, look at me, I'm a T-Rex dinosaur. I have short arms and pretend that you are and run around the house. Or would you be too ashamed that your partner would say, what is wrong with you? You need to grow up. And you'd say, I'm practicing my Adam and Eve energy. I'm practicing the imagination. And then the action part of me is the demonstration. The demonstration is how I move this energy from my root to my heart because when that little girl is swirling she can even go to her mirror and look in the mirror and see her body language different and she can see the crown on her head she can feel the dress she can even go and sit on the throne and none of these things need to be present for her to have a full visceral action-based experience now let us say to you do you allow yourself that part do you pre-attend your own future reality by or do you just fantasize? Do you stay in a place of imagination and wish? And then when you wish, wow, I wish I could be a queen. And then what you will do is instead is you will project a queen walking by you because you have envisioned a queen. And because you did not demonstrate it yourself, it is so real to your imagination. Well, then you will project it into someone else having the experience that you would not let yourself have. And then you feel shame. Why can't I be the queen? Well, you didn't pretend. You didn't act activate the action sequence within the harmonization of your brain. There is all things waiting for you when you return to your natural self, the natural self of childlike love, childlike joy, childlike adventure, childlike curiosity. This is why there is over a hundred scriptures in your Bible discussing the inner child, because it will require you to re move back into the childhood state to recalibrate your brain. You see, one of the reasons why you hear spiritual teachers such as myself and others discuss following your passion, following your joy, being in your natural state and pursuing the expression of your imagination is because of the harmonization of your brain. It is moving your left and right brain back into unity, into a divine marriage. And through this unification, you will ignite the pineal gland, which is the seed of the Christ. And as this seed begins to bloom, your whole body will be filled with an insane amount of love that you cannot even express or think of in this moment of now. But it will fill your body. It will fill your life. It will fill your bank accounts. It will fill your system and your family and all that you touch and brace around you for the rest of your existence as this light will never go out but it is a so we want to show you how simple this is that you do not need to manage your marriage you do not need to manage your money you do not need to manage your life you need to manage your brain you need to get your left and right hemisphere to fall madly in love with each other which means the places within you that you do not like your behaviors need to be loved. The places where you do not like your feelings need to be nurtured and loved, which means that Adam must love however Eve is, and Eve must love however Adam is. In all of the distortions, in all of the rejections and heartbreaks and wounds that take place in your story, all that is required for you is to love unconditionally that enemy within. And when you can love that enemy within, you will create harmony. You will create synergy. You will create flow. You will create magic. You will create instant miracles. Your brain is the receiver. Your brain receives telepathic energy from your higher self. It also receives data from the third dimensional stories, which means the world is not safe. But if it is in harmonization, it can only hear the higher self. If your brain was in harmonization and union of love, it would only hear your higher self. But the more separated your brain gets with each other, the atom and Eve within, the more it looks 
outside of itself for a different masculine uh, um, inspiration. Eve looks outside of herself for masculine inspiration. Adam looks outside of himself for Eve inspiration. And so this idea that uh, men are out uh, being promiscuous with women, this is the hunting of Eve. Adam is looking for Eve everywhere except within himself. And where Eve is in resentment of Adam's out in the world, this is where she is looking in the opposite direction of where her home is. And so the embodiment work that the channel has created is all about the harmonization of this Adam and Eve energy. It is the left and right hemisphere. It is the masculine and feminine, because this is what creates the child through the orgasmic experience of love. The idea of moving something into a state of passion so high, and then it is released. Because after you all climax to a certain point, you do not have the need whatsoever. Matter of fact, you can't even feel the desire anymore. And this is when the seed gets planted and it is left alone until the passion returns and this is the idea of your sexual relations and your marriages is to co-create this together but you do not need anyone outside of you to co-create your reality you do not need that job to give you money you need to move into alignment of acting and demonstrating a level of play that reaches the state of prosperity or abundance because there is a state called prosperity there is a state of abundance there is a a state of peace there is a state of joy there is a state of fun there is a state of adventure there is a state of curiosity but you are waiting for these states to come to you you are waiting for this money to come to you and it just does not work that way you have to meet the universe halfway and begin to demonstrate with your physical body because your cellular memory your muscle memory your blood the way it flows is different when you are in passion it is different when you are in the state of joy and when you are in